Hello, welcome to Pride of South London Fan TV. Ali here, bringing you my review of the Burnley game and looking ahead also to Leicester on Saturday. But before we get into it, I've just got a little something for the young lad, Perique. Bottle of wine. Uh, I know Roy was looking for a bottle of wine for your seven minutes at Liverpool. Young player, not sure what contract he's on. So, Perique, if you want it, I'd, I'll deliver it to you. Roy doesn't need to know. And then... Hopefully you get 10 minutes next time. Anyway, getting into the Burnley game, and there's been a lot said on it in social media. Some of it quite over the top. Some of it fair, I think. Um, first thing to really talk about is <laughs> some fans saying they think we should or would be better off being relegated to rebuild this team. Got to disagree on that one. You've only got to look at what's happened to Wigan this week to see the perils of the drop. And it's not either some fans are forgetting how hard it is to bounce back in the championship or having supported Palace in the championship. Um, and I think particularly at the moment with the way the world is, we, we don't want to be dropping out of the Premier League. I don't think the rebuild is as big either as some people are suggesting. Um, I know the squad is on the ageing side, but most of the players are between 28 and 32. And arguably, that's when you should be at your peak, particularly the 28 to 30, 31 side. So I know we've got Scott Dan and Cahill who are above that. Vincente is relatively young in goalkeeping terms. But I absolutely agree that we need to add some younger players on top of that. But we would be in a much better position to do that if we are in the Premier League. And it was refreshing this week to see, hear Roy say himself that he thinks we need to do that in the summer. Um, and I have credit to him for that. And he needs to be backed on that in the summer by the board. And hopefully he will be. So, but I do think it is also fair to call out what was quite obvious to fans on Monday, poor in-game management. Now, that, that leads me, and I'll go straight into, as I always do, into uh, rating for Roy, rating for the manager. And I'm a massive fan of Roy. I, I, I think he's done a great job this season and I look forward to him being in charge next season, hopefully, as well. But call what you see. And that's what fans have done, really, on, on Monday and since then. And I'm going to give him a three because I think a three out of ten because I think, well, like many, I think the in-game management was poor. And the obvious place to start is Max Meyer coming on again out wide. Now, I think like most fans, I was just sitting there and I couldn't believe that this was a substitution that was happening again. I discussed how it didn't work in my Liverpool review. And, and, and the feeling I sort of had when, when I saw him coming on, it's like when you tune into X Factor year after year and you see, still see Louis Walsh on the panel. And you know you're going to get the same drops served up. And, you know, what happens when Max Meyer comes on, as I said in my Liverpool review, is he drifts into the middle because that's where he feels most comfortable and we become quite narrow. And it ends up really of a, of a central midfield four of Max, in this case, Max, James MacArthur, McCarthy and Luca, And they're not really the best boy band ever when you're looking to get back into a, into a football match. It's, you know, three out of those four arguably defensive midfielders and it's quite boring quite boring to watch it's like Westlife singing on stalls singing flying without wings and we were literally flying without wings weren't we because we took Andros Townsend off for a central midfielder why not keep Andros on I mean I know Andros Townsend perhaps wasn't having the best game like most of the, if not all of the players but at least he was trying to do something at least with him on the pitch we still got some width Put Max in the middle. Try and get some balls through to Jordan Ayew. And that brings me to starting 11. I mean, I can't argue with starting 11 too much because in my preview of the game, with Benteke out, that's probably what I said I would have gone for. But when you're watching the game, you're thinking, why do you really need a midfield three of Kiate, James Mc uh, Kiate, Luca, and James McArthur? Let's, let's get someone in the middle who can split a ball through for Jordan Ayew because Kiate makes sense when you've got Benteke knocking balls down um, and then Kiate wins that second ball but 
I don't know. Give give start James McCarthy, who's arguably a better passer than Kiete, or give Matt Meyer a game through the middle. I think you've got to go with a different combination in that three if you're playing at IU instead of Ben instead of Ben Teke. And it just it was familiar because fans kind of feel like and I've that definitely the the substitutions and the, the late substitutions and and sometimes the wrong substitutions to get back into a football match is a familiar feeling with Roy. And I think it's I think it's hard to say he's not got a plan B when he came up with solutions last year when we didn't have an obvious striker and in playing Townsend and then playing uh, Sahar up front as well. So I think uh, we saw really obvious flaws, though, the other day. But at the same time, we know Roy does have it in his locker to make changes and find solutions. And, and he needs to find those now going into the rest of the season because we still got half a chance. And that's probably what was most frustrating about the Burnley game was that we could have gone really clear of Burnley and being right back in the heart of things, pretty much where we were after the Bournemouth game. Instead, now we're five points adrift and a win against Leicester would, would get us back into it. So we shall see. And, and actually, I think the Leicester game is probably more up Roy Street. I think that's the sort of game where he produces a result that we're not expecting. It's where he really shines. And I think looking ahead to the Leicester game, arguably, we could see the best of Roy after what I think we saw was the worst of Roy in the Burnley game. Interestingly as well in the Burnley game, it was interesting to see Dyche and McNeil, who have both been linked with Palace. I think Dyche did a very good job and he sort of, sort of like, um, ironically, showed the flexibility that we were looking for from Roy in he used Dwight McNeil floating behind the strikers and that worked. He deployed him really, really well. But as I've said before, Roy does have that in his locker too, the way he used Will Fernandos up front last year. So I think, you know, we've got to dust ourselves off um, and go again. And I think there's an opportunity against Leicester, a team who we've beaten away in the last two seasons. We've got a good record there previously we've got an opportunity here to to get back into this to to really you know at least we should be still be aiming to get in the top 10 Let, let's see where we go in the next few games but I think I think this Leicester game I'm going to call it but call me mad but I think I think we could beat Leicester um, I'm going to predict a 2-1 victory. I think the way that uh, Scott Dallin and Cahill sort of sit back and um, play deep because they don't want to be caught by pace will be hard for Leicester to break down. They, they like to catch people on the, on the break with Jamie Vardy with balls through the top, over the top or, or behind the defenders for Vardy to run onto. And I don't think they're going to get much opportunity to do that. And maybe that is why we've got such a good record at Leicester in recent years. I think James Madison is a doubt. Leicester are, aren't in great form either. I'm going to call a 2-1 victory because I think it will suit us to play on the counter against them, whereas against Burnley, we were sort of expected to be on the front foot and that never really suits us. Uh, Leicester, even in their defeat to Everton the other day, had 65% possession. So we will be set up to counter. That's when we, we were at our best. Um, so I'm going to go with a 2-1 victory against Leicester so that's it for me today um, like I said Burnley was very disappointing I think fans had a, had a right to make some criticisms of that game the in-game management was poor but looking ahead to Leicester this is the sort of game where Roy really shines and and you kind of feel lucky to have Roy so let's all stay fully behind the team and fully behind Roy in a, in a way that we can uh, obviously, we, we can't get behind the team in the way we would like in the stadium, but there's still a lot to be positive about. And a win would be six points out of 12 since we've come back. And if you said to us at the beginning of this restart, you could have six points out of 12, we've probably gone, OK, well, let's see where we, we could go somewhere from that. So it's still, for me, all to play for, but I think it's 
a must three points really not just to get the possibility of Europe back but also just to get that good feeling back so here's hoping as always if you disagree, disagree with anything I've said please comment in the comment section below what's your prediction for the Leicester game I'm going for 2-1 Palace um, give me your predictions in the comment section below and as always if you like these videos please subscribe